I, I want to give a, a big kudos before we get into this message to Pastor Outing for last Sunday for doing an amazing job on that. That was uh, dynamic, didactic, incredible, and I felt like after he did such a great job, to add behind it would be robbery, so I changed our subject theme for this, but no, it was amazing. Um, so I want to talk to you today from a new series of thought. This is our light intro into it. I want to talk to you about miracles in the message. Um, I want to read Luke chapter number one. I'm only going to read a few verses of it, but I'm going to summarize it for you because we're going to be here all month. Luke chapter number one, verse five through nine. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke, New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, New Testament. Luke is a physician. That's his profession. Notice that God uses people that have regular vocations, that you don't have to be a preacher to be used by God. You could be used by God in whatever space or sphere of influence God has given you. So he says, when Herod was king of Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order of Abijah, and his wife Elizabeth was also from the priestly line of Aaron, Old Testament Moses and Aaron. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all the commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive and they at this time were both very old. One day Zechariah was serving God in the temple for his order for his order was on duty that week. As was the custom of the priest, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. Father, we pray that you'll breathe life to this pastor, that your hearers will be blessed by the reading and the teaching of thine holy word. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So this particular narrative is, is Luke writing about a man named Zachariah. Zachariah is a, Zachariah is a religious leader. He's a priest, and in, in that dispensation, the priest didn't work every single weekend they had their particular weeks that they worked. So they wouldn't be preaching every single week. They had weeks that they worked and they cast lots to determine whose week it was. And it, it just so happened that it landed on Zachariah and Zachariah had his responsibility to go to work that week in the temple. Uh, the interesting thing about this particular story is that Zachariah is like many of us. He was a priest. He, his wife didn't have children, and, and in that day, if your wife, if you didn't have children or if your wife didn't have children, they were looked at as less than, and, and they, were, they were looked at as something was wrong with them or somebody cursed them. That's why they can't have children. Let me contemporize this for a moment and just say that's why it's important, whether you're watching online or whether you're in a sanctuary, that we are cautious and careful on who we ask why they don't have children because you don't know why they're not having children. And just because they're married doesn't mean they're not doing it. It just may mean that they are not able to conceive. And you put people in very awkward positions when you ask them why aren't they having children. So just be more spiritually sensitive, culturally sensitive, more humanity during this holiday season. But anyway, Advent is, you know the hospital that used to be called Advent, but Advent is a season on the liturgical calendar observed by most Christian denominations as a time where we are expectant and waiting in preparation for both the celebration of the Nativity of Christ and Christmas and the return of Christ at His second coming. This series is to highlight the Advent but also miracles, the messages that are happening in the miracles. Zechariah's narrative also gives a clear view that there are plenty of messages in miracles that God does. If you believe in miracles, this message is for you. 
If you don't believe in miracles, this message is for you. If you don't understand miracles, it's still for you. Zechariah is the perfect picture of imperfect faith. Following God, but faith is faltering. Serving God while settling with doubt. And God uses a miracle, but the using of the miracle was for a greater story. Let me first help us define this by saying the word miracle is so abused in today's culture, it really means nothing. Like, oh my God, I had a miracle. It's so common that it's not really a miracle. It was a miracle I found the right parking space at the mall. Well, that's not necessarily a miracle. That may be God arranging it for you, but that's not a miracle. You know, we use the word miracle so loosely that it doesn't hold any value anymore. Oh, I went to church and a miracle happened. What was the miracle? Oh man, it was, it was crazy. I went to church and I came in hungry and I left full. I mean, just stuff that doesn't make any sense that we define as a miracle and it almost loses the power of the word miracle. For definition's sake, a miracle is a surprising and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be a work of divine agency. It simply means that science can't call it. They said you'd be dead, you'd be brain dead, and all of a sudden now you, you walking out the hospital and all doctors are sitting there saying, we just can't believe it. You're in a car accident, the car is crushed, absolutely flattened, and you walk out without a scratch. You, you talking about a miracle, a miracle is you getting shot 15 times and you still surviving it. That, that's a miracle. A miracle is, is God, a miracle is you try to take your life, you try to commit suicide, you, you try to do it and then God step in and stop you right before you do it. it this is a miracle. I, I'm reminded of a story of a young lady. She was about to commit suicide. She had taken a bunch of pills and, oh no, this one's even a better story. I'm reminded of a young lady. She was in her home. She had left the car running in her garage and she went inside her house house and went to sleep. All of a sudden, she didn't realize that her car was still running. Her friends out of nowhere decided we need to go to her house. They ring her doorbell, she doesn't answer. They start ringing and ringing and ringing the doorbell because they knew she was home and wasn't answering. They knew she's kind of funny, she won't come to the door sometimes. And they kept ringing the doorbell. Well, she was starting to drift away. Had it not been for the friends that came over right in the nick of time, she would have lost her life from the carbon dioxide from the vehicle. God has a way of doing miracles. Miracles still happen today. Now, I would like to argue, we could argue, that the type of, that I don't believe there is a person like Jesus on the earth doing miracles that Jesus was doing. Now, we could argue that, no, I know such and such who's doing miracles, and I would argue that I don't believe there's anybody in the earth doing miracles like Jesus was. Now, miracles still exist. God is still doing miracles. And I want to give you two types of miracles. Well, maybe three. Number one, those caused events that focus the attention on God. For example, miracles that happen from God are like I mentioned earlier, things that are unexplained by science. Number two, those miracles that are unseen and not as obvious. They might include God's intervention to protect, prevent you from an accident. A miracle because it is something that God did, but we likely have no idea that it even occurred. There are a lot of miracles that have happened for us that we don't even know have happened because we weren't aware of them. Your car was drifting off the road and the Lord protected you from getting hit on the other side. There are miracles that happen each and every day. Somebody was coming to harm you that day, but God blocked them and you never even knew about it. Someone was going to send an email out that was going to ruin your career or the trajectory of your future, and God stopped it. I want to get to heaven and God give me a roll sheet on all the things that he stopped that I never even knew. 
miracles. God broke up a relationship that you thought was so quintessential to your life and God blocked it and you didn't know all along they were trying to sabotage you the whole way. I had a thought this morning at 4 I said, God, I would like to see an email of all the list of people I thought that were for me but really were against me and I wasn't aware. So there are miracles that God does that we are not aware of. But then letter C that I have, there are signs and wonders, according to 1 Thessalonians 2, 9, that Satan empowers his angelic forces to use to deceive people from following the truth. But typically the way you're able to judge those individuals who are workers of iniquity, who are doing signs and works, the glory always goes to them. When miracles come from God, the attribution of it goes to God. But when it comes from the works of iniquity, it always goes back to them. It never goes back to God because they always want to keep you in bondage because they want you to always come back to them because they feel like they are your source. So here it is. Let me get into this. So the text says very clearly, Luke chapter number one, it says, um, that they were devout people, they followed God, they loved God, but then they had a problem. Sometimes problems are meant to accompany and progress your faith, not avoid you because you practice faith. Sometimes problems come not because you are people, not because you have faith, but sometimes problems come to affirm that you are in the faith. And this text doesn't hide it. These people, Joel, they were, they were very well-rounded. They were saved. They were following God. They were following him to the T. But they still had something missing in their life that was incomplete, even though their faith was a complete system. Because sometimes problems are meant to accompany and help progress your faith, not help you avoid it because you practice faith. Let's get that rumor out the way. If you are in faith, it does not remove you from problems. If you are in faith, problems accompany your faith to help your faith progress. Your faith gets stronger in problems. I didn't write the rules, that's just how it works. Your faith grows more under tension. You do not grow more without tension. Your best spiritual days, if you look back, have been the times where you needed God to do it the most. It was the time you needed the job. It was the time that you needed the extra money. And you would go to God and say, God, if you get me out of this, I promise that I will. No one really serves God fully on the mountaintop. We serve him best in the valley. And I wish we would do a better job serving God on the mountaintop. We just don't do it. Historically, throughout Scripture, when God blesses His children and they're living in seasons of abundance, they typically stop doing what they did to get there. So, <laughs> when God gives us what we ask for, we tend to give Him what He didn't ask for. Let me say it one more time. When God gives us what we ask for, we tend to not give Him what He asked for. Because humanity says, I got what I need, I don't need you as much anymore. And God will have to let life circle back around to humble us again to realize, I so need you. I thought I didn't need you, I felt I didn't need you, but God will always let problems come back to get you back to your knees because you keep avoiding him because you keep winning. So now here it is, he was away from the temple, it wasn't his time to serve. It's almost like you would say he was being, not quarantined, but it was, he, he couldn't go to the temple because if it weren't your week to go, you just didn't go. Now the question for many of you who are watching from home, how do you maintain your faith when you don't go to the temple? 
No, no, that's not an indictment that you need to come because some people need to stay home. I just lost a very, my wife and I, family friend, we lost a very dear, beloved person, very young, that died from COVID this week. So it's, it's, it's a reality. Some people, but how do you maintain your faith when, you're, when your routine is out of the rhythm? See, the priest didn't go in this week, but he still had to occupy his office as a priest, even though he wasn't working as a priest. He still had to maintain his stature as a priest so that when he did go into the temple to work, he knew what to do. Now, how do you maintain your spiritual routine when you're out of rhythm? No, how do you, how do you maintain your spiritual routine? Because it's easier to watch it online. Now church is almost like a season episode. We binge watch it. You been at church? Nah, I'm about to binge watch, binge, binge watch about a few episodes of the TKC that I miss. I'm about to catch up because that's the new reality of the way that we live. But here's what I know for sure. God will always be needed because problems will always be existent. He'll always be needed. This is, this is not about will people come to church? They'll come to church. Let a recession hit deep enough. We, we run to God. We'll be like, listen, get prayer out of school. Let a shooting happen in school. Let's pray. Let's everybody, let's pray. Let's get all the, there's no fights about God when there's tragedy. A missile hit, then it's hard. Everybody, let's do a day of mourning, a day of fasting, a day of praying. Why? Because we only need God when we need him. So now this guy is called to serve. He's being asked to serve. And then all of a sudden, I like to say it this way, it's better to serve out of dedication than obligation. I had 20 minutes and then it went down to 10. Anyway, um, I don't know what just happened. Y'all stealing votes. So here it is. It's better to serve out of dedication than obligation. So what I'm saying is this, you and I, are much more effective when we serve God out of dedication than obligation. God doesn't want us, uh, here's the thing with strategic, systematic people. We schedule times to pray and it almost feels like we're doing it just to check it off our list. God wants us to pray out of dedication, not obligation. He wants us to worship not out of obligation, but dedication, because anything without, anything without passion becomes stale and mundane. So God wants us to do it out of dedication, not obligation. So here it is. All right, guys and girls, boys and girls. Cats, girls, kittens. What's that, um, Carol Baskin? Young kid? Okay, anyway, let's get back to the message. Um, there's this whole conversation about, man, I want to find my destiny. I, I want to find my purpose. I want to, I want to, I want to. But Zachariah has a purpose to have a child. He prayed about it. Obviously, he felt like God didn't hear him because he prayed about it. And then because, because he, when the angel comes to him and says in the latter verses, the angel comes to him and says, hey, I'm going to give you a child. When he's serving in God's house, the angel comes and says, I'm going to give you a child. He starts arguing with the angel. Like, how's this going to be? I'm old. And the angel's like, yo, I, yo, you prayed a while ago. God heard you. I'm just, I'm just a messenger, man. I'm just here to tell you you're going to have a child. But how am I going to have a child, bro? You don't know what my wife is doing. How you know my wife? You know, you, you've been talking to my wife? You've been hollering at my wife? How you know we're about to have a child? How you know we're capable of having children? And the angel's like, man, I ain't signed up for all this. I'm just going to mute you, and you ain't going to be able to talk no more. And so all this while, God muted him, maybe because God didn't want him to talk himself out of what God was doing. So sometimes the greatest thing that God could do, and, and here's the greatest thing. God shut his mouth and then wasn't talking to him, but God was still working, which simply means that just because God is silent doesn't mean he's not working. So let me back up because that's all next week. So here, here's what happens. God gives him his destiny when he's performing his regular duty. I know y'all missed that because a lot of us want to do something special. 
Maybe the blessing that God is trying to give you for your next season is by you doing this season. Everybody's so focused on trying to figure out, man, I got to figure out how to get another job. How about you do your job well, and maybe God will send somebody on your job and say, yo, there's this place hiring, and I think you should apply for it. But a lot of us are looking for something greater when we're missing out on being stewards of what is already in our present. Y'all ever worked a job? I used to work a job. Sometimes I want to go back and get a regular job where you don't have to like counsel people and you just sell people stuff on the phone, which is, my, which is what I grew up doing. So I ended up working out with a guy just this past month who um, worked at a company that I've been trying to work for forever, selling timeshare. And they would never give me Sundays off. That was always one of my dream jobs is to sell timeshare. And the guy says, all of a sudden we're just working out and, and I'm, we're just talking. And I said, well, what do you do? He says, well, I'm a trainer. I train timeshare salespeople. I said, man, that's one of the dream jobs I've always wanted to do. But every time I try to apply for it, they tell me I got to work on Sundays and that probably is not going to work. I said, my type of church, they'll listen to other people preach to them. And then after a while, they'll start seeing who's preaching and then they'll get back in their car and drive out the parking lot. Like, like they drove all the way to church. I said, they will log on and be like, oh, oh, he, oh, his curly hair. Okay, log on. Right. So I said, no, that's not going to work. So I said, okay, so, um. Well, I can't, I can't do that. And, and the guy says, no, pastor. Man, you're my pastor. I can get you a job working on Sundays. Work, get your Sundays off and you can work doing this job. And I was like, man, that's great. I was like, okay, so I, like, how does this work? He's like, all you gotta do is apply, go through training. Training? Training? Like, yeah, you gotta go through training and, and you, gotta, you gotta go through training. So that means people gotta, I gotta go to work? And people tell me, I got training. I don't, I'm not too sold on this idea anymore. But what I'm simply saying is sometimes God will give you the opportunity that you've been looking for if you just do what you're regularly supposed to do. We're always trying to get God to do something new for us as opposed to being faithful over what God has given us. And maybe if we're faithful over what God gives us, he'll give us a door that will bring us into the place that we really want to go. If you work your small business well, God will send a big business to you that will teach you how to work it better. But if you're so busy trying to, oh, I just can't wait to my next, I can't wait to my next, and you're blowing off everybody who's in front of you, you're gonna miss out on the next season of what God is trying to do for you. So let's get focused on doing today well, so that if we do today well, today will promote us to tomorrow. We, we gotta learn how to stop warning the next without doing now. Zachariah, your next season is gonna come from you going to work. And imagine he didn't go to work, he would have missed the angel. Because a lot of us are trying to find the angel at the Mall of the Millennia, and the angel is at your job. Do what you're supposed to do, be where you're supposed to be, and God will reward those who serve him out of dedication, not obligation. Now here's the thing about Zechariah, he's famous. His name is famous. People name their children now Zechariah. That's a name people use for their children. But here, here's the thing, this is real in whatever culture you live in. If you are in real estate, everybody wants to be famous. If you're on hair, everybody wants to be famous. If you're in t-shirt business, and they got a good black-owned hair salon in Apopka. They sell hair products, good hair stuff like this, right on Keene Road. Anyway, so, they, they, so there are, there are, there are, what was I talking about? Okay, there, there, yeah. So, so there are a lot of people who want to be famous. If you're a teacher, you want to be the best teacher. If you're a musician, you want to be the best. If you're a tax person, you want to be the best tax person. And there's, there's this whole ideology about being famous gives me more access and all this, but here's what I want you to know. If you are faithful to God, it could lead to being famous for God. Here's the flip side. However, you could be famous for God and not be faithful to God. Let me say that one more time. If you are faithful to God, it could lead to being famous for God. However, you can be famous for God and not be faithful to God. And fame does not dictate if you are faithful to God. God reigns on the just and the unjust. Just because you're in a prosperous season doesn't mean you are faithful to God. God may just be faithful to you. 
Here it is. In the quiet, God is still at work. We have to get this in our hearts. In the quiet, God is still at work. God doesn't have to be loud to be working. God doesn't have to be loud to be moving. God is still working in your life even when it is the busiest and even when it's the slowest. We have to reconcile within our heart that just because it's not happening fast enough doesn't mean it's not happening. Rewind, let me say that again. Just because it's not happening fast enough doesn't mean it's not happening. God is still working in the quiet. Number two. God's power exceeds our own ability to name it. Everything you think that you want from God, God's thought is probably bigger than yours. Every desire you want for yourself, God's desire is probably greater than yours. Everything that you've been asking God for, God probably has a greater list than what you have. You have to believe within your heart that God's plans for you are bigger than the plans that you drew up for yourself. That even in the quietness, God is still working, he's still moving, he's still operating, and God doesn't have to be loud in my life for my life to be productive. I don't have to have an update online for God to be moving. I don't have to have a new news story for God to be moving in my life I know if I post today that nothing happened today in my life it won't get a bunch of shares it won't get a bunch of likes but the reality is it's just because I'm not seeing anything doesn't mean God is not moving in a thing and I've got to learn how to be still enough to know that just because it's not loud in this season doesn't mean that God isn't stirring something up and I can't see it So, I want you to know that miracles are not God's primary use. God isn't out always trying to do a miracle. God uses miracles sometimes to help expand our faith. But he says, Jesus says it this way, it's a perverse generation that looks for a sign. I'm not going to give you a miracle every day. Now, I can do miracles. But that's not why you serve me. Miracles don't define the Messiah. Okay, God, okay, let me see how I Miracles are not meant to define, miracles are meant to define reason, not measure the faithfulness of the Messiah. That was worth another offer. Miracles are not meant to define the Messiah so God I need you to do a miracle I need you to do a miracle and if God don't do it it's like well I always knew you weren't able God hear what I say hear me and hear me clearly run this every single week you can God does not have self-esteem issues God does not take selfies to get validation from other people. He knows who he is and he does not have to perform to get your validation. God is still God even if he does not answer our prayers or if he does. It's, I know it's hard for you to, and I to reconcile. Like we believe that miracles define God. Like God, your name is on the line, and God's like, my name ain't on the line. If they, if they don't, if they don't make it, my name is still intact. I'm still gonna be God. I still sit high and look low. I step out of eternity into time as a favor to you, not because it's required of me. When you sit and look at the galaxies, you start to realize God is bigger than me. God is greater than me, and you and I. I need to recognize that that doesn't change. My, my, my daughter, she's, uh, Des Destiny is nine. I have four. It's hard to keep up with all the dates and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, I think my daughter has learned how to get daddy to perform. She says these things that I don't know where she gets them from. 
she just so rude. I don't know. She told me the other day, we were out. I said, we're going we're gonna to go hang out and we're going to do, we're going to go hang out together and do something nice as a daddy and daughter day. So we went to the mall. And she said, Dad, I want a hoverboard. She's been asking for this hoverboard forever. This, I told my wife, we're not buying them nothing for Christmas. They don't need anything for Christmas. They just, they just, 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 just nothing. And Destiny leans over to me and she says, Daddy, bring down. She said, she said, Daddy. I said, yes. She said, all my friends, they have hoverboards. But you broke. <laughs> so insulted. I have never been insulted by an eight-year-old in my life. I said, I'm going to show you broke. I went online. I said, show me that hoverboard you want. I went and upgrade her hoverboard. I said, I said here your hoverboard from your broke daddy. But she got what she wanted. Now my other little daughter come around, Desiree. She's a master assassin. She's not going to call you broke. She just going to look at you and say, why can't I have a hoverboard? Talk to your mama. But, but seriously, I performed to prove to her. But I could look at my father and say, God, you broke. And he just go outside, step out in the galaxy and say, well, I guess, I guess this is broke. I, I'm going to go look and travel to another planet that I made just because I could. God doesn't have to perform to validate who he is. He'll let you live with the opinion of him that you desire to have of him because he is still God. Now, here's the reality. Miracles are essential and needed at times. But most often when God does a miracle, it's not really about the miracle, it's the message that he's trying to get us to get. And we get so wrapped in the miracle that we miss the message. God saved my grandma's life, she's alive. He saved her, she's alive again. She's 88 now, God, you didn't save her three times. Well, what's the message? Like, it just is not about the miracle. If God let you walk out of a car accident, you should have been dead. What's the message? Is it just about the fact that God let you out? No, I think there's a greater message. It, it may be the submission of your life. It may be you declaring some things about God for the rest of your days. If God saved you from getting shot at, what's the message? It's not just the miracle. Because we get hung up on, oh my God, what a miracle. No, what's the message? What is God trying to tell you? What is God trying to give to you that the miracle blinds you of seeing? Like, what, what's the message? Like, all of us have miracles that we've experienced in our lives. What's the message? I'll never forget. 16 years old, 17 years old. I had a Toyota Camry at the time, Toyota Corolla, 17 inch rims, two tents in the back. Pioneer head, Pioneer dash, dash thing. Remember that? It's nasty. It's the hottest preacher alive. <laughs> had praying hands on the back of my car. My car was anointed. It was an evangelistic machine. You pull up behind me, you see him praying hands behind it. And I'll never forget, I was at this checkers right down here on Powers Drive, trying to get that Buford. Buford was life changing. Two for five. Back then it was two for three, dog. Back then it was two for three. Anyway, I was at the store, and um, there was a, a white homeless man there. I'll never forget it. And I got my change, I reached out, I gave him my change. And the guy looked at me and said, he gave it back to me and said, your ministry will never lack. This was a homeless guy. And I'm like, who, who are you? I wasn't a senior pastor, I was just a minister. 
I was like, who is this guy? Guy just vanished off and disappeared. Scripture says in Hebrews, you're entertaining angels unaware. 20 years later, you're pastoring at that point, 15 years ago, five years ago, we were pastoring right on Powers. We bought land on Powers. We're building a housing complex on Powers. We're right up the street from Powers. In a pandemic, God has still prospered us. What's, what's, so the miracle could be, oh man, God, but no, there was a message in that. Like, what's the, what's the message that God is speaking to you? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I forgot to tell y'all what Zachariah's name meant. Oh my goodness. Zachariah's name means God remembers. What's the message? When you forgot? Y'all ain't talking to me. When you forgot? What's the message? When you forgot? God remembers. When you thought God was moving on and did not remember you, God remembers. What's the meaning of it all? God remembers. Even when you moved on, even when you counted out, even when you wrote it off, even when you said it's far out of line, even when you said I'm not qualified, even when you said I'm too old, even when you said I don't, will never make it, God says, I still remember. I remember the dreams you had as a little girl. I remember the things you had as a little boy. I remember. I have not forgotten the words that you have spoken. I remember the words that you said. I remember even when you thought that I had moved on even when you thought that God had used somebody else I still remember God remembers he remembers he remembers be not dismayed Whatever be time, God will take care of you. They're calling him Zachariah, God remembers, and even though he's hearing it, he still forgot. And I want to pray with you today, y'all, that you won't live by miracles. Pastor, I need a financial miracle. Well, I hope you don't need a financial miracle every month. What's the message if God gives you a miracle? Have a savings. Get a second job. Work two jobs to build a savings so that you don't need a miracle. Because money is a great master. Money is a great servant, but it's a terrible master. So in everything that you pray, there's a message in every miracle. Don't miss the message because you're so caught up in the miracle. Man, it's... I, I want to know what you forgot about. I really, no, seriously, I wish I had a chair. I, and I'd like to really just hold a conversation and I'm closing. Some of you are retired. That's cool. But what's unfinished on your list? And if God didn't do the miracle you wanted, here's the reality. God didn't promise us miracles. He promised us presence. This will change your life. God did not promise us miracles. He promised us presence, which means no matter what you endure, I will be with you. That's the hardest pill for you and I to swallow. 
He did not promise us miracles. He promised us presence. That I, I won't leave you. I won't leave you as an orphan. I'll be right with you. And even in our world where people are dying, it seems, younger and younger, the last few funerals we've done here have been 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, mom was burying their kids, and, and you might say, well, why didn't God do a miracle? God didn't promise us miracles. He promised us presence. And it don't feel good, but I still believe it's working for your good. You and I need to know, because how we, how we view God determines how we work with him. God, if you don't do this, then I'm not serving you. It doesn't change his mind because you don't serve him. You're not punishing God by not servicing him. You're punishing yourself. God wants you to serve him out of dedication, not obligation. God, I'm going to do it for your glory. God ain't concerned about his glory. He's got enough. <laughs> He's got enough. Can I help some of you too? Some of you humility people that killed me? Man, that was a great thing you did. To God be all the glory. Okay, that's cool. You, know, you say that for yourself. But God isn't, God isn't threatened by you saying thank you. If you need to say that so you don't become high-minded, then you say that. But trust me, God is not concerned about you stealing the glory from him. <laughs> you ain't big enough to hold the glory and ain't bad enough to steal it. You ain't, let me say it again. You ain't big enough to steal the glory and ain't bad enough to handle the glory. And yes, all glory belongs to God. All glory belongs to God. But it's okay to say thank you. Just remember that it's not your glory, it's his. Man, you sang so beautifully, all glory be to God. In your head, you'd be like, put that on Instagram because I killed it right there, right? <laughs> Listen, I want to pray with you and we're, we're, we're done. If, if this... If you've just first heard this and you're thinking, man, the Advent season is, is a time where most of us celebrate Thanksgiving is over and we're anticipating looking to Christmas. Like we love looking to Christmas. That's what Advent is. But Advent isn't like, I just love it because Z88 plays Christian, uh, like uh, um, Christmas music. I, I love Christmas time because the way it makes me feel. No, Christmas season is a reminder that I am coming for you and I will be with you forever. Father, I pray those that are watching for the first time, second time, or watching this later, or maybe watching through many years from now, they will hear this resounding sound that there's a message in the miracle. And Holy Spirit, I pray today that from my brother and sister that's in this sacred space and watching online all over the U.S. and other parts of the world, you would encourage them to know that God still remembers. He has not forgot and he remembers. Help us to hold dear to this truth that when we have forgotten, God still remembers. So Lord, I pray for my brother and sister who may have been disappointed that they didn't get a miracle that happened that they were praying for you to do. And maybe God, I pray that it doesn't ease their pain, but it helps give them context that God is not required to perform miracles to be deity. Miracles are a sign for the unbeliever, not for the believer. And I pray, Holy Spirit, 
that many of us who are still like Zachariah, we, we are serving out of obligation, not out of dedication, would switch gears into serving out of dedication, not obligation. And I pray for those that are at home right now that have been praying for a miracle in their body to be healed, been praying in their mind, been praying in their soul. Holy Spirit, you still do great works and great works do you do. And in this moment, I pray by the Spirit of God that you would begin to do what they've been praying for and forgot about. Father, let testimonies of healing come forth even as they are watching this broadcast. Father, even those in the sanctuary, I pray that you would send healing to areas that they've stopped praying about, that they've stopped believing you for. Reawaken, quicken, quicken their mortal bodies again, Holy Spirit. And let them know that you are God and God alone. So, Father, I pray that you'll send ministering angels now to begin to work on the behalf of your children. And there is somebody here that really, really needs a miracle. I pray, God, that if it be your will, you'll do it. It will be so. And we'll understand that it's not the miracle that we praise, but it's the message. We know that you're trying to do something great, wondrous in the midst of us. So we trust you. We lean not into our own understanding. We acknowledge you in all our paths. So Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Minister as only you can minister. I pray that you would let miracles happen even during this series. That people will see checks come in the mail that they did not anticipate, God. I pray that people will find health in areas that they did not find health in. I pray that they'll draw strength in areas that they did not draw strength in. I pray that you'll heal, you'll heal, you'll heal wounds that have been overlooked in the name of Jesus. I pray for those Zacharias who are serving you but stopped believing a while ago. Their minds have said God cannot and God will not. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would rain your anointing upon them. You would quicken their mortal bodies as you did Zachariah. And to the one that is 80 years old, naturally or metaphorically, they feel they're too old and time has been far spent. Father, I pray you will give them a second win to that person that's been trying to achieve the goal but keeps failing and cannot pass it. I pray that they will not get discouraged. They will be encouraged to know that whatsoever God begins, he will complete. I pray for your children learn this week that they will see you in extraordinary ways, that they will see you in ways incomprehensible, that they will see the hand of the Lord during this week. They will be able to testify that God's hand has been upon my life. I pray for favor even in negotiations. I pray for favor even in house purchases. I pray for favor even in their credit reporting. Holy Spirit, I pray for a season of miracles, a season of signs and wonders, things that only attributed to God. And we shall be very careful to give you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, all the glory due to your name. And those that are hurting in this season, those that are weeping in this season, those that are crying in this season, I pray you'll be their peace. I pray you'll be their portion. Jehovah Mekadesh, the Lord who sanctifies. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Will you be there for those that need you during this season? that I broke him during this season, that I hurt during this season. Lord God, would you show yourself strong and mighty, mighty in battle. Father, help us to lift up our heads, O ye gates, so that we may be lifted up the everlasting doors so the King of glory can come in. You are the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Help us to have this as our testimony, as our declaration that God, you remember.